welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. It's been a while, uh, but I am back, and I'm going to see what we can do with this and see if we can build up a little Beverly Hillbilly family. I've got a really nice Andy Griffith family over there. In case you're an Andy Griffith fan, you can also go to my Facebook or uh, YouTube channel page of uh, the Andy Griffith Show Facts and Trivia. I appreciate it if you do that. I'd appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe here. Um, share this on your Facebook page and give us a like if you like what you're seeing. Uh, this is uh, in order to build up the channel, uh, the more the merrier, right? Okay, the first uh, thing I want to do is uh, some things you may not know about the Beverly Hillbillies. Let's just get into it. What do you say? The Beverly Hillbillies rose to number one in the ratings faster than any show ever. Granted, they weren't exactly that many television series on back in 1962, but becoming number one within three weeks of your debut is a pretty incredible achievement for any show. This might have had something to do with the United States desperately needing to laugh after the assassination of JFK. The episodes that aired immediately after Kennedy's death are even today some of the most watched half hours of television comedy of all times. John Wayne had a cameo in an episode and was paid with a fifth of bourbon. TV was considered a much lower form of entertainment than movies back in the day, so when the Duke made a cameo in the episode of Beverly Hillbillies, The Indians Are Coming, it was a big deal. And when they asked one of the biggest movie stars of all times how much he would like to be paid, John Wayne replied, Give me a fifth of bourbon, that'll square it. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, it was a bottle of Jack Daniels. The show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, was a huge hit on the Billboard charts. The show's iconic theme song was sung, or spoken, by Jerry Scoggins and featured the legendary banjo playing of Earl Scruggs. It reached number 44 on the charts and was one of the uh, first huge uh, mainstream bluegrass hits ever. Well, it was actually released on uh, a lot of the bluegrass stations was uh, flat, flat and Scruggs. Uh, doing the song. Jed Clampett was almost someone else on, on off screen. Just before he got the role, uh, future Barnaby Jones star Buddy Ebsen was about to quit show business altogether. After he got the role, he changed the very nature of his character. Originally, Jed Clampett was written as a total moron, but Ebsen insisted that even though Clampett went, had no formal education, he should by no means be a fool. After the character was written, Max Bayer Jr.'s character, Jethro, was given most of the ignorant redneck lines. Donna Douglas is a blue jeans icon. After the first season, an executive at Levi Strauss was quoted as saying about the actress who portrayed Ellie Mae Clampett, Donna Douglas had done more for the sale of blue jeans in one year than cowboys have in a hundred. Beverly Hillbillies came from Missouri. In the pilot episode, the narrator at one point said, let's take them back to the home in the Ozarks and see how this whole thing got started. Series creator Paul Henning was, in fact, from Missouri in real life. The state contains much of the Ozark Mountains, so it makes sense that Henning gave the family members a similar origin up to his own. The Clampets were rich, but they were not billionaires. The mansion the Clampets lived in sold for $30 million in 2007, and according to the first season of the show, Jed Clampett's fortune was $25 million, which adjusted for inflation is about $200 million today. The show was almost set in New York and not L.A. Originally, Paul Henning thought it would be funny to bring a backwoods person, possibly from the year 1860, into modern society. This idea originally involved New York, but the cost of filming there, as opposed to California, necessitated the switch. So the series was ultimately canceled in something referred to as the Rural Purge. Tired of having a country reputation, CBS decided to cancel every show with the country setting uh, so that the network could be more appealing to advertisers seeking a younger urban audience. At the end of the day, Petticoat Junction, Green Acres, and the Beverly Hillbillies all got the axe. Granny's real name was Daisy Moses. The character was Jed's mother-in-law. Her daughter, Jed's wife, uh, was named Rose Ellen Moses. Other members of the extended Clampett and Bodine clans include Jed's widowed cousin, uh, Pearl Bodine. 
who was uh, played by B. Bernadette. And that's what I got for you today. Uh, it's kind of long. Not all, of them, not all will be this long, but I hope you enjoyed it. As I said it earlier, please subscribe and, and please give us a thumbs up if you don't mind and share these out on your uh, uh, social media pages. Appreciate it. And I want to thank all my uh, Andy Griffith Show Facts of Trivia uh, family for coming over and watching. And I appreciate it if you'd share it out too. Thank you very much. God bless. And I'll be praying for you. Thank you.